Always good to see you, Julia. Hey, Karen. It's good. Yeah, good to see you too. And it's Monday today. So I had a, after a long weekend. Uh huh. And I suppose the question is, how do we feel about that <laughs> collectively and individually? Um, and that's the essence of our conversation today is interpretation and mm. how we are pretty much always interpreting our lives, ourselves, others. Um, and so if there are people listening, you might want to stay tuned for what we're going to be sharing with you. Um, and we had a brief conversation before starting the recording, and I said I'd share a quick story with you about the power of interpretation. And as you said, it's a long weekend, and we were due to go away on Friday for the weekend with a good friend, and off we trundled at about two o'clock. And as we were driving, the our friend phoned us and said, you may want to turn around because the place we booked is flooded. So anyway, we said, oh, that's interesting. And she said, well, how far away are you? And we said, we're about 20 minutes. She said, well, come and have a look. So here's the first set of interpretations. We arrive and walk into the place and it's on a dam and the water you can see is right at the top level. As we walk in, that place is disheveled. So everything has been moved out. They're busy packing, trying to uh, get water out of little bedside tables. The beds are on top of tables. And I'm like, mm, I don't think we can stay here. Anyway, so chatting to the, the woman who's doing the cleaning, they, they were a crew of six people cleaning. They've clearly been cleaning since nine o'clock or eight o'clock that morning she says no I think it will be fine if you just give us a little while you'll be able to stay here and I'm looking at the water on the deck I said uh no I really don't think we're going to be able to stay here I said you know there's more rain coming I think we're gonna want to go back and clearly they wanted the sale um mm. and clearly we wanted to be comfortable and even if they had been able to clean up, it probably would have taken another three hours. Um, anyway, and so as we're driving home, I said to my husband, I said, you know, I said, I'm going to choose not to be grumpy about this because as we were driving, we were driving through a mountainside and they were the most amazing waterfalls. And to be able to drive in that vista and see those amazing waterfalls, mm -hmm. I found completely mesmerizing. And um, so, yeah, so it was a really good opportunity to pause and to think about how do I want to respond rather than react. Um, so that was that was my weekend adventure. Yeah, so thank you for sharing that. And um, I had a chuckle because I was imagining, you know, <laughs> so I was as you were sharing that story, I'm I'm having a, an invisible thought bubble going on here imagining what it was like and 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 even imagining my own response had I been there you know so and and the, and the point I think that that um of this is that even in me listening to your story and trying to put myself in your shoes I am in interpretation mm. and so to be human and to be you know living and engaging in the world is to also understand that we're constantly making interpretations and that that in the, the and the place, if I'm going to use ontological speak, the place we interpret from can only ever be our way of being. Mm. And I, you know, I, I in the obviously as a coach um, have daily contact with clients and coaches, and a lot of them use the word personality, and I tend not to use that word. I use way of being because it implies that I how I I am being at any point in time, or how I'm being with the circumstance, for example, how you were being with the news that your friend phoned you about when you saw it, and then the cleaners, you know, and it, it's so um, useful, I think, to see how it is that we set up our way of being, I, I want to say, I, I want to say set it up, or we organize ourselves, but it's not a conscious thing all the time. Mm -hmm. 
And I know for you, Karen, it, 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 it probably is, and for me, because we work with this, these ideas and these distinctions every day. But in effect, our way of being, so we will have a, we'll always, we're always going to have a, a script for what's going on, a language, you know, words that we use, a meaning that we generate from something that we're experiencing. And of course, we're going to configure ourselves emotionally in that. And for me, what was so interesting about what you said is I'm going to choose something else. I'm going to choose to feel differently. So much of the time, we don't realize that we have emotional choice. And I just think it was such a wonderful way that you shifted that. And I'd imagine when you had the shift, I, I would imagine myself getting that phone call and I, my bodily response would have been, mm, plan haven't gone according to, chance, to plan. The, the reality hasn't got, gone according to plan, but it, but how you could just sort of calmly say, mm, not the reality I want for this weekend. Yeah. And, and have I would imagine you had a bodily shift as well when you saw the beauty of the waterfalls and the gratitude of being in that so I guess what I wanted to illustrate is that we're always making those interpretations and we can shift them yeah. you know so interpretations have an immense power in 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 informing how we're going to experience something and perceive it and then the internal power is huge because we can shift it we can change it mm. yeah it's um Thank you for that reflection because it's always great to to be in conversation because it stirs other things and I think you're right I think over time there has I, I have been practicing and you have been practicing and we we work with people clients who practice being able to move from perhaps a reactive response to a more responsive mm -hmm. um way of of acting that wasn't very well said from a reactive place to a more responsive place. And, um, and of course, we'll always encounter ourselves as well. So as you were talking, um, in that instance, it was really great to be able to choose my response. And then there's been some other stuff that's been going on around work where I have found myself caught. And even that is a gift to see that at the moment I'm being reactive and I'm caught um, is an alternative interpretation to simply reacting. And I yeah. think that's the power of the work that we do and the ontological coaching approach and being able to rec recognize it's all development. It's all learning. So there is no personality to your point. I also have that. I, I've learned to not react to that. <laughs> <laughs> and to go okay so that's an interesting choice of language what does that mean for me what does that mean for you what other interpretations could there be and um yeah and so I think that if you know if, if we're able to offer to our clients to people who are listening to us that we can we can understand that almost everything is an interpretation so even when an event happens there might be some facts in it and then we make interpretations based on who and how we are being our way of being um and there's and 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 in the moment we might react in some way and then we can start to still inquire further mm -hmm. and what a gift yeah i and i i, I was just pondering the meaning of the word react mm -hmm. the reaction or react you know and, and this is a little interpretation i worked with because it's like when we react versus when you act, you said that, you know, and then you sort of corrected it to maybe yeah. be when you respond. And, and, they, and they're, they're in itself, the words we choose have meaning. But the one little thing that I thought of when we react, it's like we're doing the same action over and over without much um, understanding or awareness of how that's going to impact the outcome we're looking for or whatever. And I think that's part of, part of when you say, I, 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 got, I got caught, but can you not get caught up in the same old, same old? And I think that's the thing. How do we, when we reframe something, for example, yeah. using a new word or using a new emotion or something like that, or even relaxing in the body, you know, easing tension, it, it, it means we don't have to get caught up in that same old, same old. Mm. We can have a whole different experience. So yeah, we can make different choices. Yeah. 
and I don't know if you said this, it really is about observing our observing and yep. and being able to notice that. And then, as you say, I, I love what you had said about react. You know, it's it's really, it's, it's Einstein's comment about <laughs> the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. That's reaction. Oh. And so the ability to be able to start to observe ourselves differently, mm -hmm. which automatically then allows us to observe others differently, observe our circumstances, events, and the world. Um, mm -hmm. Hmm. So pretty good way to start a Monday for me. Me too. And maybe, you know, maybe there, maybe there's a question or something that is emerging out of this, at least for me, that I would like to offer. And that is on your Einstein point, mm -hmm. if I want a different outcome, or if I want outcome X, what interpretation might I need to shift that is currently blocking me from attaining that? You know, yeah, you know, very nice. Question. It's one I work with. <laughs> yeah, know. yeah, I think that's wonderful. I'm trying to think what others I might offer too. Um, I think I think one is you know what are my current interpretations? Um, how well are they serving me? And I'll offer some others. In in what way are they helpful? In what way or ways are they not helpful? Um, what other interpretations could I explore? Yeah. So those are some some others, and, and you might have some more after that, Julia, too. Well, I I I have I have a little one really, and that is sometimes if to just pay attention to the words that I'm that I'm using around something and I, I saw a wonderful clip last week that a friend sent me and I'd reached out to the friend saying oh I feel I'm not I'm, I wasn't I wasn't having an easy week last week and I wasn't feeling physically um well I, I'd had COVID and I was recovering and I, I I felt like I had quite a lot to do and I like I didn't have the energy and the time to spend attending to to some she sent me a clip which was by an actress Reese Witherspoon. It was one of these shorts and she was relaying something that a colleague of hers or somebody she knows had given to her. And she said, thank you, I'll take that. And so I borrowed it from Reese Witherspoon too. And it was like, I noticed in my language, I was starting to go, well, I have to do this and I have to attend to that thing on my to-do list. And I have to do it before Thursday at such and such a time. And what the clip was saying was instead of saying I have to, or I must, it's just so easy for me to go to that place still after all these years of paying attention. She said, what about if you reframed it to, I get to do that. So I get to sit in this traffic jam and listen to this fantastic music. Yeah. I get to um, hang up the washing and give myself a break from the work. You know, I get to, um, I get to have these clients that are, that are waiting for me to have these things on my to-do list. Yeah totally different reframe and, and it's just a little word shift you know? yeah, and um may i reflect something back that your how everything seemed to shift in your body like your the tone of voice sparkle in your eye um and i'm i'm guessing a mood shift as well yeah yeah definitely so yeah. So in, in a way, I mean, look, we're always going to have our habits of being. So the must, the should, the have to. Um, I have I have more of a like a mood habit that sneaks up on me, which can be um, must and have to can go with it. So annoyance um, mm. and to be able to just notice and shift, notice and shift. So I think of that lovely infinity symbol. Um, and I think that's also a great gift for me is I don't have to be perfect and I certainly don't want to expect perfection from others, which is key too in this. Yeah. In this well, thank you. It's been a delight, Karen, as always. And now I have lots of food for thought and lots of reminders to self to how I'd like my week to be or mm -hmm. how I would like to be with the week as mm -hmm. it unfolds.
me too and what I get to do Julia I get to, <laughs> and, and how I get to be with the unexpected that will inevitably pop up <laughs> brilliant well thank you very much and I I look forward to our next conversation yes me too go well you too cheers <laughs>